20. Okay, great. And um, so I'm going to move forward with uh, the Pledge of Allegiance. Actually, I'd like Mr. Mason to do it. Sure. Please. Okay, so I'm going to mute myself. Did you unmute? I'm going to mute myself. Why do you have to come down? There we go. Please stand. Hello? Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Unmute myself. Oh, my video went away. Okay, great. Back. I feel like I should be getting better at this, and I'm not sure that I am. Okay, so I think I'm still sharing my screen. I am. And I'm going to forward agenda, which I believe is right here. Okay, so do we have any requests for ordering of the agenda? Any changes to the uh, ordering of our agenda this evening? Uh, who's going to monitor? Can someone monitor chat for me? Yeah. Kelly, will you be in charge? Okay, thank you. Turn that open. Okay. Volume back up. Okay. Stop. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay. So, no hearing, no request for item, reordering items. <laughs> you just mean it. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, we'll move on to item, public comment for items on the agenda. And I, I anticipate we'll have a few parents wanting to speak about graduation from what I've heard in this segment. So Kelly, if you'll monitor, uh, I think everyone has the ability to unmute themselves and Let's just take turns. I hope you have the video as well. I'd love to see and hear. Um, get rid of me here. Let's see. <laughs> oh, uh, the little pair, four corners. We better. So, does anybody like to kick us off items? On the agenda. I okay, guess this is not on the agenda, isn't it? Right. Graduation is not on the agenda this evening, right? It's not. It is. Okay. Yeah. Great. So that can come up under items on the agenda now. Yeah. Okay. Great. So would anybody like to start us off items on the agenda? It's items not on the agenda. Start. Oh, it looks like we need to unmute our, our video. So there's a start video in the bottom left of your screen. It looks like it initially forces everyone to stop video and mute themselves. So if you're willing to start your video, especially for comment time for the speaker, that would be helpful. If not, please feel free to address us anyway. Melissa, are we on topics for items on the agenda or off the agenda? On the agenda. Okay. And we believe that graduation has is on the agenda in context of the superintendent's report. Okay, I don't I don't mind starting. Then I have I have some I'd like to talk about graduation. Okay. So um, I'd like to open it up for discussion with the board. Um, we had a graduation meeting earlier. I presented. Um, there was a couple board members there. I sent some packs, packets with them. Um, in lieu of a possible discussion about an in-person graduation that practiced uh, social distancing and had some safeguards and guidelines uh, that went along with that. Um, I believe that we can practice um, social distancing and safeguards um, by, by doing a few things. Uh, I think the biggest thing would be uh, moving, the, moving the stage 
uh, location of the stage could be moved to either the north side of the field, which would be the visitor sidelines of the football field, or it could possibly move, be moved to the west end. The reason for moving the stage would be basically then you would be able to social distance the graduates um, a little more safer. Um, I think as far as spectators, you could obviously, and you would want to limit the amount of spectators that are there. I think in my proposal, I put four or less. Um, I think that kind of just depends on when we do the math and the square footage and what we can do to be safe. Um, there are several other things, and I don't, I don't want to take everybody's time, but you know, providing um, disinfectant um, wipes and stuff at the entrance, um, being very careful about exiting. Um, I ask that all guests uh, bring masks. Uh, we could provide masks um, for guests that show up without masks. Um, speeches, we could limit the amount of people on stage um, by, by pre-taping the speeches. Um, I think we could limit people on the stage because in the past we've had quite a few on the stage, which I think proposes an issue with social distancing to just admin, necessary admin. Um, I think that um, we could announce graduates at the end one by one so that there's, you know, to, to prevent the crowding that could happen at that situation. Um, I think we could practice a lot of safe, a lot of safe issues. Uh, restrooms would be closed. Um, I think that, that would be something that could be an issue. So I just ask you um, that if you look at the proposal, I'm open for questions. Um, I just, Hope that it's something that you might take in, you know, and, and something that's a, a discussion item for you guys. So I just want to thank you for your time. So they, uh, we were handed your, the proposal to look at. Thank you. Yes. Do you have any inclination of what issues the health department what might have with our plan, if any? Personally, I don't. I don't. It hasn't been presented to the health department. Um, yep. I can tell you that I have uh, kind of picked the brain of some local schools and districts that are going to host an in-person graduation. Um, and for privacy matters, I won't share who that is, but I've kind of picked their brain and their, their ideas of what they're gonna do to keep it safe. Uh, limited spectators, keep the, keep the graduates safe. So, but I have not reached out to the health department personally. Okay, and I see um, a proposal of limited to four or less Yes, for graduating senior. I yes. think this would be adults only so that each adult would have the ability to make a decision whether it was safe for them or not. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. And the reason I put four or less, Melissa, is because I think it's dependent on where you put the stage. You know, if the stage is put on the north side, then I think you're only using the grandstands, which are on the home side of the football field for spectators. If the stage was pl uh, placed on the west side, then that opens up the availability to use both sides, visitors and home grandstands. So I think then you could probably socially distance more kids, more uh, adults, more spectators safely. Okay. And tell me about the, the taping of speeches. Will those be given at graduation? Will those just be available online? And, and what- I think the they could be played at graduation. Um, there's a possibility, I think, where you could have somebody similar, like we announced the football games, having something that's pre-taped pre-recorded and played that way. Um, I think the announcing of the students could be still done by admin um, as they as they leave one by one. So I don't know if that answers your question. And when I say speeches, I think we keep it to a minimum. I think you're talking about salutatorian, valedictorian. Um, I believe there are some scholarships that need to be presented at graduation because of the way the money's tied to them, but that could also be something that could be just kind of pre-scripted and read. Mm -hmm. Okay. What, what questions do you have as board members that maybe would help us give some direction? And by no means do I think, Melissa, that this is a perfect plan. I think it's a, a think pretty perfect. good starting spot. I think it's something that would maybe launch some some talk and some discussion. Um, yeah, yeah. It looks like there's been a lot of thought put into how we might do this safely and still provide something that's very, very meaningful to our students. I really appreciate all the the work that went into this. I I would anticipate that there were several heads that came together to think this out and, and put the plans to proposal. Thank you. Thank you. What questions concerns? 
I don't think we get to vote on it. This is, yeah. So I guess it's really more for questions and and we have the ability to give direction, don't we? Even if without a vote. Yes, we want to do that we can sure sure any other proposals or ideas or yes yeah, okay I'll mute myself I just have one quick question as it was kind of mentioned previously limiting to four or less to attend it was mentioned um, adult only so are we saying that those four guests would have to be 18 or older I think so I think each attending should have the adult responsibility, I believe, is a safe choice for me to make personally. I don't personally. Is that, was that kind of your thought, Eric, and when you guys were putting this together? At least one of the schools I reached out to, they were going to limit it to 18 and above. Wait, 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 wait. One second. I'm sorry. Okay, okay, one of the schools, Kelly, that I reached out to, were, were they were going to limit it to 18 years and above. Okay. okay, perfect. Thank the other, the other, the other have not set the parameters on ages. Okay. I think that's one parameter I'd like us to seriously consider as a responsible option. Okay, Mike, questions? Any, any other proposals? Thank you very much. I think you have somebody at the bottom, Melissa. I think Kim. Hi. Hi, everybody. Hello. So I was this is amazing. Second time today. I'm gonna get good at this. So um, basically, I was just kind of um, going off of Eric's and I, you know, idea. Um, I had thought about this myself a lot, and I know we always have the the graduation facing our homes, our stands. And my thought, and I don't know, I kind of missed a little bit of what Eric was saying is why not you know, turn it to where they're in the center of the field, like by the goalposts and open up both visitor and home side so it can separate people more. I don't know if that's what he said. And you know, like I said, limiting it to you know, certain, you know, a few people. I mean, I don't wanna sound cliche, but I mean, gosh, these poor kids, and we can go to Walmart and all stand in a crowd, but you know, these poor kids can't have a graduation. So I'm hoping we can do something you know, decent for them. But um, that was just my thought, and I, I missed his part. Yeah, great, thank you. That's it. Okay, anyone else? Hi, are you able to hear me? This is Marcy Voorhees. Yes, we are. Okay, hold on, I'm trying to start my video. Can you see me? Yeah. <laughs> Hi. Um, so I'm in agreement with both Kim and Eric. Uh, my daughter's Taylor, and she's really been trying to figure out her and her friends together in terms of what can be done, even if the, the graduation had to be postponed into like mid-June, as long as they knew that they were going to uh, have a physical graduation where they're walking. These kids have spent 13 years of their life, you know, really working hard and this is kind of like the finalization for them until they go off to college. I don't think being in a car, driving six feet apart um, is doing them do justice um, or doing them right by, by the hard work that they've put in um, basically the majority of their life to get to this point. Um, so I'm hoping that the board can at least maybe put it on an agenda or on an emergency agenda. I think there's something set up for the 21st of this month. Hopefully they could put it on to, to make, be able to discuss uh, doing something for our 2020 kids. And that's all I really have to say. So thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Anyone else? I'll take one more comment. Anyone, anyone like to speak in from the other side of this issue? That would be helpful to hear. I'll just speak um, really quickly. I think it's also important to, um, hopefully this gets run by the health department um, because there have been instances in other schools where gatherings happen that they did not approve of. 
and they came in and shut things down. And I would hate to have a graduation going on where somebody came in and, and broke it up. So hopefully the plan is to kind of work with public health. Um, and the other thing is really talking to high school teachers and staff and knowing how they feel about it. Um, because this is the first I've heard of the graduation and I definitely wanna make sure that we're honoring our students, but also making sure that um, it has the support of the full community as well as the staff. Well, I'm not sure we'll ever have support of every person. This is a pretty hard time to get any kind of consensus. No, no I agree. Um, but I know this is like the first I'm hearing of any of the plans. Um, and so my responsibility is also to protect the teachers. So I just hope that there's some kind of conversation going on with teachers as well. Because I don't know if it's a surprise to the high school teachers that this conversation is happening, but it, um, I think it might be. It would, it, it's gonna be very important to us if we go forward with something like this, that anyone who shows up in any capacity do so of their own volition. That there will be no command performances, no expectation of anyone who's expected to participate. This was, is that, am I fair in saying that? Yes, okay. Okay, thank you. Okay. Anyone else have a burning desire to speak before we move on with our agenda? I just guess I want to make sure that it's clear if we do make the decision to move forward with this for the high school. I think you're muted, Kel. I just want to say that I feel that if we make sure that we're moving forward with this with the high school, that we also have to remember we also have eighth grade graduates. Um, so it would be the same. Okay. And yes, homeschooling class as well. Okay. And I'll bring that slide back. All right. So we, it sounds like we're trying to make a proposal for high school graduation, eighth grade graduation, and COG graduation in homeschool. Okay. Is that your intent? Eric? Yeah, you're muted. Happens to the best of us. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, that was my intent. That's why I kind of gave the two proposals because I wasn't sure on the number of graduates at Eglin and if that would exceed um, the being able to practice safe social distancing for spectators in just the home grandstands. So mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know. I think their number's probably larger than ours. I think we're in the low 90s. Um, so yeah, that's why I kind of, kind of the rough, the rough sketches of, of both proposals, just in case that's something we needed to, to be careful of with Aigley. And based on numbers, we could decrease it from four to three or three to two to allow yep. for the spacing. Okay. I mean, it, we have to put this out and then families have to come. Uh, 92. Okay, great. Great. Okay, I'm going to move on to I don't think anyone can hear you, Rebecca. Yeah, so 20, sounds like 20 potentially at homeschool and cause, 125 at the high end for eighth grade, and 92 at the high end for our high school. Okay. Is that something that could be a possibility or is that something that's... No, I... Yeah. Okay, great. I'm going to move on to public comment for items not on the agenda this evening. Do we have anyone that would like to speak on items that are not agendized this evening? Hearing none. Well, um, to Melissa, I will say something. I, I want to clarify what you said at the be very beginning of our meeting. You said no change was made to administrative staff. Correct. So does that mean that Mr. Johnson is not leaving? No change was made to administrative staff. That's all I'm allowed to say coming out of the board meeting, out of the closed session. Correct. Okay. I know it's very confusing. <laughs> It's unclear, but all right. No change from where we were a week ago, other than Mr. Mason's leaving us. So, okay. Um, recognition and celebration, we 
have uh, discussed our two retiring long-time teachers, Mrs. Myers and Mrs. James. Any, was there anything planned that I didn't know about that it was on? Maybe we recognize them too soon since they were on the retirement statement, but not. Yeah. Yeah, we did. Sure. I can speak on this since they're both at my various sites. But we we definitely at the last board meeting recognized Mrs. Myers and Mrs. James uh, for their long standing time in our districts and has been for me an honor working with both of them. Um, I've gotten to work with Jamie uh, twice now as we got to be uh, administrators together at the summer school program. And then I got to reconnect with her at Birchfield and it just was a pleasure working with her. And we have some uh, time left to honor them more so uh, when, when given the proper opportunity. And then uh, working with Mrs. James the last few years with the homeschool program has just been wonderful and, and learning and, and taking every bit of knowledge from her as I possibly can. So um, yes, we did recognize them, but I think the last time that we did this, Jamie was not logged on. And I think this time maybe she is. So I just wanted, I thought it was worthwhile to give an extra shout out and let her know how much it, it's meant to me getting to work with her over the years and um, as well to Roberta, you get to hear it twice. Um, but definitely my, my pleasure and my honor getting to work with you both. Great. Okay, that moves us on to our student report. Do we have a student who's here to share with us this evening? I can. Great. <laughs> um, so we, is Pablo in the waiting room? Just for just put something in the comments. He texted and said that it might be his device, but it is showing him that um, He's waiting to be let in. So I don't know if that's, oh, no, Ms. Jennings said he is not in the waiting room. So it must be his device. So carry on, Kelsey, you. you're up. <laughs> okay. Um, so we are, as students, kind of gearing up for our last week of distance learning on Google Classroom. I believe all of our assignments are due on the 26th. Um, there are a few things going on with various clubs on campus. ASB is currently holding their elections, um, and those will end tomorrow. Or voting one tomorrow. Um, as far as the FBLA elections that we had mentioned, um, both Renee Rosinski and I were lucky enough to be elected onto the team, and so we had our first board meeting this last weekend. Um, other than that, I think that's about all I have to say. Thank you. Congratulations. That's very exciting. I was thrilled to see it in the Pioneer. The whole community got to celebrate that. That was a huge win for our little place in the world. Good job. Okay, we'll move on to President's report, which I guess is me. I don't have anything to say. There's a lot going on. Uh, and Board of Trustee time. I, do we have any reports from any of our groups? I, not that I'm aware of. Great. Okay. And that moves us on to Superintendent report. Mr. McIntosh. Already there. Okay. If you'll unmute your sound, I'll mute mine so we can hear through your computer. Tech report. I think you may not have video either. I'll just jump online. Okay. <laughs> okay, we're switching switching laptops. Yeah, I'm new to that. Oh, here, I can share my screen. And what I need is the under the superintendent's report. 
there are two. Um, okay, that. Here we go. Can you see this? Okay. Get in there. Please. Well, what I'll do is, well, um, we're trying to um, pull up the okay, attachment. The CCOE planning considerations or the Sacramento? Um, we'll do, um, yeah, we'll do the this County Office of Education. Yeah. Okay, you've got, okay. Let's do the Sacramento County Office of Education because we have a, Okay, so there, there are a variety of, of prototypes that have been put together for, by several county offices of education, and this is to explore alternative models for educating our students um, as we head back to school in um, August. And many of those um, proposals um, entail um, the health and safety of the students, the social distancing, as well as um, how we're going to um, sanitize rooms. And then when we get to um, the schedules, and this is really brief, but I, I just would really like um, our community to know that um, most likely it's not going to be business as usual when we begin school in the fall. Um, some of the things that I'm reading is um, we won't be back to normal until we have um, an immunization that is effective against COVID-19. So the options are um, students go to school in, um, for example, Monday and Wednesday or Tuesday and Thursday, or they go to school one day a week and they turn the work, turn all the work in on Friday. So all of this is to accommodate much smaller classrooms so we can have six to eight feet apart for each student and we can assure the safety, the health and safety of our students and staff. So what that means is we have a limited amount of classrooms and a limited number of teachers. So we have to do the best we can by utilizing in-classroom instruction as well as distance learning. So are, do you have questions about that? There must be <laughs> a lot. Um, no, well, we don't have any firm answers, but um, I think it's important just to, to recognize, for all of us to recognize that it's going to be a significant challenge for all of us um, when we head back to school in the um, late summer, early fall. So, with that being said, Uh, we may not have the answer to this, but I know it has been mentioned many times about getting back to normal when there is a vaccine. Um, is that meaning that that vaccination would be something that would be a requirement for the children to return to school? Well, it, it seems like it would be if we're <clears throat> if we are bringing children back to school and in under normal circumstances where we are going to be in close proximity then children, the children and the staff would need to be protected by a vaccine so they would be immune to COVID-19. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. So shall we go to back to graduation now? which is the other item on um, under the superintendent's report. Is that okay? Um, so it sounds like there are um, 
like some alternative plans for graduation. So Josh, you want to start with um, Clarissa High School and um, where you are and then what we've heard this evening? Hope that everybody can hear me. Is everybody can hear me? It's okay. Um, yeah, right now um, we had a planning meeting at three o'clock with the local uh, fire and police department. And it sounds like conversations uh, that have occurred uh, there and then here tonight at the uh, board meeting that uh, we want to explore that option of having an in-person graduation. Um, I don't mind uh, calling um, the contact at the health department if the board wants to move in that direction. Um, if not, we did have a plan in place uh, with the fire and the police department to do a um, basically a parade graduation where we'd start over by Hoblet Motors, drive through town, uh, you know, family members, all those different types of, uh, you know, relatives, uh, whatever it may be, they could uh, watch those kids and um, get my video started. There we go. Ah. Perfect. Sorry, different computer. Um, so those people could still wave to the kids, things like in that nature. So the uh, students would be able to decorate a car and, um, you know, we would end at the high school and have the stage set up. They would still be able to uh, walk across the stage, uh, have, still have that photographer uh, take their picture, and then they would get in their car and, and leave. And so um, uh, we do have a plan in place for that. However, it sounds like some alternative options are being explored. So uh, whatever the direction of the board wants to move tonight, uh, let me know and I'll try and make it happen. Uh, for planning purposes, I would just say that we need to get uh, some type of plan in place just for uh, MOT staff and um, all those different partners that need to make this graduation happen. So uh, sooner the better, uh, but we'll see what happens after tonight. Uh, but we do have a couple different plans in place, it sounds like, and it just uh, depends upon the direction from the health department and the board too as well. What is the plan for getting caps and gowns? Are they already distributed? Nope. Caps and gowns just came in this week. Uh, wow. So there was a uh, lot of facilities that were shut down as far as production facilities. And so we just announced it today that we're going to have caps and gowns uh, distribution on Friday from 11 to 1 p.m. And then we're gonna send out additional communication here uh, within the next day or so in regards to students returning school issued items and also collection of locker materials, things of that nature and stuff. So um, I know everybody's looking for those answers. We're just really trying to um, cover every single angle that we possibly can before we release information because the last thing we wanna do is release information and have to pull it back and replan, do all those different types of things. So. Uh, since we now have caps and gowns, we do not have all the skulls and sashes, so those will probably not be distributed unless we those come in our possession. Uh, we're kind of at the mercy of all these different production facilities right now that got shut down for COVID-19. Uh, yearbooks, things of that nature probably won't be here until June. Um, there's just a number of, you know, like I said, items that are we're at the mercy of when they come. So uh, we'll do our best to get that information out to you guys, though, uh, by tomorrow. Uh, as far as what we can distribute and what we can't distribute. And then also, um, you know, as far as those protocols for those students to show up on uh, May 27th and 28th and things of that nature. So uh, doing our best, I appreciate everybody's uh, patience and understanding through this whole process. Um, we all want to get plans in place and we all want to get these things distributed and uh, you know, have these great end of the year events. And so we hope to have these events out soon. So on the graduation topic, one, one thing to consider is there's no question that this isn't an, a sanctioned health department activity, right? 10 or more is forbidden. And so as a group, we have to decide if that's something we're willing to act, act against, basically. Erica, do you? Um, what I'd like to also throw out there is um, not only do we look at having one mass gathering, but if you're looking at including Eggling in the same format, and Eggling typically is Thursday evening before you're looking at two mass gatherings. Three. With well, in three, I mean, there's is much smaller, but looking at it, still, you know, it's still considered true. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. so uh, from the Eggling, I just worry that 
I think it's definitely important that we have a plan B. Um, you know, we have, we've got the plan B, the plan written up to do a drive through graduation, whether it be, you know, we can do it at whatever site is most convenient for traffic flow through town and that type of a thing. Um, I do want to throw out there that high school graduation is definitely a significant milestone. So I, you know, high school graduation needs to take precedence over eighth grade graduation. And so if it means we only have, you know, public health says you can have one, it definitely needs to be the high school. And, um, you know, we can, um, we can we can go with the flow. It's what we do. <laughs> so right now we have the plan to do an eighth grade graduation drive through style. Um, they'll drive up, walk across the stage, get their diploma, photography, that whole piece, get back in the car and head on out. Um, we've done gowns in the past, but our gowns are not purchased. They are borrowed from the school, so we won't do them this year as a sanitation concern. Um, so dressing nicely is appropriate. And then... Um, you know, we'll still, um, we were having a live stream, that's the plan to still give out awards, post stuff on our Facebook page, or not a Facebook, but um, our website about who got what, you know, who got what award and the little write-up that the teacher would do, or even have some of that stuff pre-recorded to post. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it's, an, I just worry that they, they'll say no to two definite or three definite mass gatherings. And so I think high school needs to definitely take precedence in that. Ms. Chase, if we chose to go around having one in person graduation and it was the high school, how how do you think that the homeschool and college graduates that our seniors would feel about integrating into the high school event? I mean they they're they've chosen to go not that route. I think that's a bigger discussion uh, that can be had. Um, I can tell you our plans for the alternative site. So our alternative plans were that um, we do a drive through fashion and that we were going to have one, if we did it, we were going to have one constant that would uh, set up and such for the MOT department and our technology department was consistent. And so that's uh, the plan was we'd never gotten to do this before, but to do a Friday at 10 a.m. for the cause and homeschool. Um, part of that just because we know that the angling planning is going to be considerable if they did a drive through format and so doing the two on the same day uh, we were a little worried um, so we were we were planning Friday at 10 a.m. so that was something I wanted to make sure you were in the loop on and then everything else will kind of move forward as, as plans evolve and we get directives. Mm -hmm. Okay. What are you thinking? Board members? Let's I would like, like to see, to see if, it if it is possible that we hold an actual graduation ceremony. ceremony. And, and as and mentioned, um, Zarek mentioned, mentioned, it's, it's important to both eighth grade, homeschool, cause, and high school students. students. However, However I, feel I feel that if we have to make a choice, I feel that it is, you know, important to those seniors because this is their last hurrah. Um, they worked very, very hard to get where they're at. And that's just, you know, I would hope that you know all of our eighth graders, um, they will get that that important graduation ceremony when they exit high school as well. But I think that I would like to see us at least give it a shot and see if that's something that we're capable of putting together and making work. Okay, the eighth grade graduation, um, you said it was gonna be a drive through, drive by, drive? Drive up. Drive up. So how does that work? So with the drive up graduation, um, they'll like, you know, come from this direction. <laughs> I can only explain it with my hands. <laughs> come from this direction, they come with their family. They can get out of the car, the kids will walk across the stage and then get their diploma. If they get any additional awards, get them at the same time, get their picture with their diploma. And it's, you have to set it up like in a parking lot or right in front of Calusa High School and then the family drives by and they pick up the kid on the other side. Um, it's what a lot of other junior high schools in this local area are doing. It's what PV High School is doing and what Chico High School are doing. Okay, so we, uh, yeah, we can set it up wherever to make it logistically. Probably, yeah, there's more road space there than it would be. Thank you. Um, while we, I think the, uh, the high school graduation is a 
I should be on, am I on? Yes, yes you're on. Okay. The high school graduation is very important. It's, it's, it is a big milestone for these kids, but I'm still concerned about the, the health uh, concerns, the, uh, the risks. And I think if we put a lot of people together and we set all of these rules, I'm not sure how well all those rules will be followed. In other words, it could, we could wind up with a crowd that gets out of hand. Okay, yeah. that was brought up today at the graduation meeting and the police will be there. We will have law enforcement at the graduation, right? Did they agree that they, yeah. Yeah, sorry, let me ask myself. Well, I'm yes. more, my inclination is more to, to go with the health department recommendations. And I do like the idea of if we, if we could move it later that, you know, where we could do it right, then I would be lean more towards that. Yeah, there are, yeah, there are quite a few comments I see that are on here um, in regards to the health department having a statement published on their page. On their page? Um, it, it is a guidance that we not have graduations. But it does say, uh, as is our book. As is Hasn't been. They're talking about something like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, well, uh, I think Williams is doing all virtual. Right, they are yeah. all virtual. Uh, true, yeah. 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 From what, From what I, I understand, I'm not sure if this is 100% accurate. accurate. From what I understand, what I understand Princeton and Maxwell have uh, up to do up to the traditional graduation ceremony. Um, and and Williams, Williams is 100% virtual. Is that? Okay. And then Pierce is very seriously looking at um, like a modified. Where kind of like yeah. Right, yeah. So I have um, something that I just need to bring to your attention. Um, it's the liability factor for, um, for the district. And that liability would be um, our insurance carrier um, making good on claims that could result from um, violation of, you know, the health. Um, it, it can be anything, but specifically if somebody contracted, they could trace it back to COVID-19. Um, it um, just... If it's a guidance, though, is that in... Pardon? If, if it's worded from the health department that it's guidance, is that truly considered a violation? Well, yes. At this point, um, we have not been approved to have... It, actually, more than ten. Right. Yeah. So. Okay. So Mike has some concerns. Kelly, where's where are you at? I mean, I, I have some concerns. I just feel that it's it's a huge milestone. You know, I think we can put something together in a safe manner to where we're trying to really. You know, we'll keep it very modified, keep that uh, social distancing, um, at least for the seniors. I think it's something that is possible. Kathy? I think Jamie did a great job of putting together. Um, Eric, sorry. Jamie was there. <laughs> Eric, <laughs> Jamie, Eric put a, a great, uh, did a great job. I'm sure Jamie helped him putting um, together a, a plan to have a graduation. And I honestly think the majority of the parents and the students, that's what they want. And I think it's, it's their graduation. And if, if there's any way at all possible that we can do it, I would really like to see that. Chris? I don't I, that's what one of the things Chris and I talked about was potentially having everyone that shows up so, and it may not be legally binding waiver, but it's you have shown up of your own accord, you know that this is a risk to your health and be responsible for heaven's sake. Chris, what do you, what say you? I, I think the, um, there's probably more on the students and the parents and 
we need to make the best decision we can, but whatever you put together and if it's at all possible, and the other schools seem to do something similar, uh, I think it's worth us trying to do it. And probably we had the same insurance company as the other schools. Um, so, I, but regardless, I think uh, being safe and the parents, what's, for, what's right for the kids and the parents, especially even in eighth grade or college or home school, they've all worked hard to be where they're at. So, um, if it's possible, we should try to do it for all three sides. Um, and that's my opinion. I would think we should try to do it as, as much as we can. We should try to um, follow through with it. I'd kind of like to see high school be our top priority. I agree with Erica. It's, a, it's the largest and I don't know. It, it's hard for me because I know how hard the kids work through get, to get through the cause. And that's a big accomplishment. Yeah. When we when we communicate with the health department or whatever we are doing moving forward, we can we can communicate uh, the various elements of our alternative programs too, because it's such a small population. We could do staggered times between cause and homeschool, and then we can actually stay within the bounds of their requirements. Uh, if you know what I mean, I think I, I don't. That's why I think we focus on the high school, and then a lot of creativity can come into the homeschool and cause because we're smaller. Yeah. So. Okay. So I, I don't anticipate that there's any world in which we're going to get the health department to give us the thumbs up. Um, so we have to know that going into these this direction. Mr. Lance, question, is there any personal liability for <laughs> Sorry, is there any personal liability for orchestrating a large event, or does it all fall upon the school district? I mean, I just, you know, that's something to throw out there and think about. I don't know if there is or not. And will, if we move forward with um, an in-person graduation, will it affect any future phase rollout for Calusa County um, as far as businesses? Because, you know, things got played a little nasty in Sutter County for rolling out a little faster than what was said. And then it, the skids got put on Sutter County and I'd hate to affect the whole county. So I'll double check, but I'm pretty sure that our, our current liability coverage includes uh, officers and directors, and, and that's a, a separate rider on top of the liability insurance. So anything that you plan as an officer or director of the school district, you're covered under that umbrella blanket. Um, so you would be covered with would be personal liability for planning the event, but you know, as, as John said, uh, if something happened to somebody and they filed suit and we were outside of um, state or county guidelines, then the insurance company is not going to honor the claim. And then the suit would become a direct cost to the district. And that's where it gets very risky. Because if you have a, well, you look at some of these liability claims, they're not for $50,000. They start hitting six and seven figures. And that would have to come out of the general fund. So we want to make sure we stay within our uh, insurance clause. Um, we can check with them on it. But you know, as John said, if it's if we're outside of what the state guidelines are on this, the insurance company is going to use that as an out because they're they're not going to want to pay a you know potentially a million dollar claim. It's not an easy answer. I mean, this is basically the, the answer that every public official is facing. Doing what's right for their constituents versus doing what's allowed. And, and this is a really hard time to be in public service. It really is because the, the only safe answer is no, no to everything forever. And we never go back to real life. And, and we just hope nobody gets sick. <laughs> you know what? 
I don't believe that's right for our community. We've, we've been one of the most active communities and, you know, our ag communities in the North state have been among the most active because all of our, all of our workers are essential for the most part. And we've been able to manage some pretty low numbers. And I walk into the grocery store and I maybe see one or two people in the grocery store and those aren't staff. Those are elderly people typically that are concerned for their own health that are wearing masks. It gives me some, and I've talked to a lot of people, it gives me some read on where this community stands. And I'm kind of in the, of the inclination that, that we do what we think is right for our students. I, it, you can't please all the people all the time. And I, I think at some point we have to start doing what we think is right versus saying no to everything. So I, So what's our next step? What, what, what do we have to do to go forward? With this? Well, it, it sounds to me like you're, you've, you're asking me. It sounds like um, there's at least three of you that want to move forward with um, like uh, regular graduation, you know, with constraints. Okay, four of you, okay. So um, you're not taking a vote, you arrive that through consensus. So what you're, what you're saying to us is we need to do everything we can to, I don't know if it's all three graduations or if it's just the high school. Um, I think you need to um, think about what you want to do, but at least the high school, it sounds like um, the high school needs to move forward with planning a um, like a modified regular graduation. And at what point do we get to make that decision, though? As far as yes, we are doing this for the purpose. Excuse me, for, for the parents to be able to plan. Well, we we'll move your computer a little closer to you, so make sure everyone can hear the speaker. My question was, was at what point, point do we know when you're in the direction we are to with in regards to graduation? So that way we are allowing our parents and our families time to plan for whichever direction graduation is going. Um, so we, we need to have a budget workshop and we had one tentatively scheduled for the 21st, which is Thursday, is that right? Um, I don't think that's agendized yet. Um, this is Monday. Uh, we would have difficulty achieving the 72 hours if we have one on Wednesday. So actually the soonest we could have like a board meeting where we could have this on the agenda would be Thursday. Especially I'm talking about that. We can't call a special board meeting. We can't call a special board meeting. So um, 24 hours. Yeah. Okay. So um, again, to have just one additional meeting, some of the things that we wanted to go over as far as budget to give you guys insight on uh, the information that Governor Newsom uh, issued last week with his May revise. I'm going to need more than between today and tomorrow to put that together. That May revise just came out on Thursday, and a lot of it are still data points that um, we haven't been able to quantify. So I need a little bit of time before I can do that. So maybe Wednesday. Okay. Um, we were just talking about graduation. We could have a, a quick graduation meeting and then later budget. Do you want you have multiple meetings this week then? Yeah. Okay. Or, next, or one next week. Once as soon as, I mean, you tell us. You tell us. Well, I, I need to get the budget information to you, I think, sooner than later so that you don't hear panic in the grocery store and you have information that you can actually, you know, have a conversation and go, no, here's what we're looking at and this is what the district's plan is. So I, I wanted to do it Thursday. That gave me some time. I could do it earlier than that. I just wouldn't be able to do it in a day. So you'd have to have multiple meetings. And I don't want you guys to have, have three meetings in one week either. That's, that's a lot. So is anybody, is there, are we available Wednesday? At night? Can you do Wednesday night? Wednesday? Manage. Yeah. 
Because I mean, we have to we have to decide this quickly because yep. of the, the logistics with the high school and. Mm -hmm. And just for clarity, are we still waiting for parents from the public health department? Because that's also going to be a different. I mean, that's something that we're taking into consideration. You know, we'll take that. Um, well, we're so we're meeting, and we, um, the superintendents in Clusa County, are meeting again tomorrow um, because we're trying to get uh, our uh, health official. Um, who has really, um, any, let's just put it this way, he hasn't provided any input in, to us through our meeting. So, um, and likely it won't happen tomorrow, but we're going to have uh, a meeting tomorrow anyway. So how quickly we could get the health department to um, respond to our request, I, based just on my um, small experience here, um, it's not likely that we're going to get um, any guidance quickly. That's good. And we've heard from people that have, you know, people that have, been, that have gyms that are trying to find a plan that works within all the guidelines. They're being told by the local health department that they need to go to the state. It's just chain of nobody wants to step out there. I mean, me as a, as a democracy, it's very concerning that they're going to take no for answers. Sorry about that. Yeah, yeah I, I don't anticipate we're going to get any answers. No. Other than no. So what I'm hearing now is you could be here tomorrow night, tomorrow Wednesday. afternoon. Wednesday. Pardon? Wednesday. Oh, you can be here Wednesday. Wednesday. Can everybody hear Wednesday, so. So we need to do Zoom or do one I'm going to do Zoom? Okay. I think we need to do Zoom. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, I have another one. I can call one. What time? 5.30. Does that give you enough time? Okay. So five, so it, or does that actually work for you? That's fine. Okay. Yeah, I'll make it work. Okay. Wednesday. Yeah, I can probably jump. Okay, great. And in the meantime, graduation and budget. Yes, graduation and budget. Okay. Great. Anything else before we move on from superintendent's report? Yeah, there's a comment from Marie. Let's see. Stacey, do you mind yourself? Melissa, I'm going to go ahead first. Me? I have a question. I want to go back to this. Okay. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. yes. I don't know if this is the right time. But I do at some point want to go back to what Mr. McIntyre was talking about as far as the plans for the fall. Whenever that's appropriate, I want to go back to that. Go back to the fall. Is there enough? That was my question. Did you hear me? Yeah, yep, I heard you. Okay. Wow, it's really hard. Is yeah. an echo? Yeah, there's an echo on our end. It's really loud. Oh, okay. I think. Um, Yes, I, I think we need to spend a fair amount of time. And I think as part of the budget conversation, we will likely go back to it on Wednesday. But at this point, I, I read through the, the Sacramento document that's on our, our agenda. We didn't talk about the CCOE document. Is that something you'd like to address this evening? No, okay. Um, it's, I think there's gonna be a lot of change and Basically, the, the gist of what I think John was trying to communicate was that it's going to look very different in the fall. We don't know what that means. It's going to depend so much on COVID cases and, and California Department of Education and what their recommendations are, it sounds like. Um, are they going to be recommendations or are they going to be mandates? 
recommendations or mandates. Sorry, I turn this up. I, I'm just curious. It seems kind of crazy considering the, the number of cases we have had and have not had for, for us to put in place some of the, those very extreme changes. Yeah. When we just haven't had those cases here in our county or really too much around us. So her question was, do you anticipate that the, that the guidance from the state will be recommendations or mandates? Well, I think they'll, I think they'll be guidance because there will be um, schools and school districts that are small enough to accommodate what it looks like um, in August. And that is small classes. Every day. Um, I think you're muted. So, so what John's saying is that there are there are districts that are small enough to make you know think about our lady boards. They probably could accommodate the social distancing recommendations and guidelines, but he said it's going to be primarily guidelines. And so, it really comes back to us as a district to, to decide what's right for us. It's, it's what it sounds like to me. And I kind of think we need to have a regularly scheduled agenda item in any meeting that's any new information. What are we hearing? I mean, from here till who knows when. I think in, in addition to items on the agenda, not on the agenda, what do we know about COVID related to our, our schools? Right now, we know that it's just not going to be the same in August. We know that for sure. We know that we will not come back in a traditional manner in August. I know I'm not muted. I think you're still muted, John. <laughs> you guys are looking at me now. <laughs> John, my, my, my statement was, do we know that for sure that we will not come back in August in the traditional manner? Or is that, I mean, kind of a few months. I'm just wondering about a few months. I'm just wondering if that's something that with regards to that we will not definitely come back in the traditional manner in August or is there still time for us to possibly have that happen? It's, I think it's possible. I don't think it's likely. Okay, so Carmen, will you come up next? She leave. Okay, Carmen, I'm going to read your uh, I'm going to read your comments since you have it jumped on the screen. It says so. His graduation is going to be a go, and the kids will have to be vaccinated before they come back to school. Is this correct? No. no. Graduation is not necessarily a go. We're trying to prioritize and make it happen, and. We'll continue that conversation on Wednesday. Kids being vaccinated before they come back to school, I think, is a complete unknown. Okay. Well, can there's you no hear vaccine, me? and I don't. I think we're going to try to wait till there is one to educate our kids and get them back in schools. I think oh. we're right as a board that we want kids in seats in school, interacting as soon as humanly possible, because it does okay, not well, serve our, it doesn't serve our parents, it doesn't serve our students. It, it's not good for these kids' well-being, or for, quite frankly, for the parents' well-being to be all homeschool teachers. It's that we have varying degrees of ability, and even the ones who we think should have great ability, it's really, really hard. And keeps, I mean, I'm personally not working right now, and I would really like to be, but I'm homeschooling two children, and I know I'm not alone. It's very, very difficult, and we'd like to see them in school soon. So, Carmen, it looks like you're on. Go ahead. No, I, that was just the question oh, that I no, had. No, I muted myself. Okay, how about now? I, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Okay. okay, yeah, no, it was just a question I had because that was something that was stated earlier that, you know, a vaccine needs to be had before they can come back to school. That you know, yeah, I, I'm, yes. yeah, you know, I'm just, you know, as a parent, you know, I'm still working because I work in the power industry. So, you know, I've got my son home doing homework and I'm trying to get through all of this. So, you know, like 
we're all in this together, yeah. you know, and trying to figure it out. Yeah. I, I think the thing I've thought since the beginning of this is there are no right answers. Every answer is a wrong answer for a huge group of people. And it's a really, really hard time. And I totally agree. We're in this together and we just have to do what we think is right for our community. We can't decide for the rest of the world and we're not being asked to. So, no. yeah. Okay. Stacy. Okay. Thank you, Carmen. Thank you. I don't have a high school student, um, but I would just, I live in this community and we're, everybody is really concerned about reopening and getting businesses back up and being able to continue just living our lives. And, and so my concern that needs, that I think should just be brought up is that if you host a super spreader event or a potentially high contact event that goes against public health officials, you're jeopardizing or potentially jeopardizing whether or not we can actually remain open because the way that our phase two is set up is that if we get more cases, it's 25% more than what we have, which is only three, so we only need one more case, then the entire county will have to reconsider going back to phase one or shutting down again. And so it would just be something that I think you have to weigh the cost value there. It's not easy, but it has to be considered. Yeah, Mrs. Lemonager brought that same point up. Is we're at, we're at risk. We've been at risk and we will continue to be at risk. And we have to keep weighing those every step of the way. Sorry, I'm not seeing all these. Um, Melissa, I'd like to speak when I could. Yeah, great. Great, thank you. Um, you had brought up earlier the point of, you know, it'll be all adult guests, it'll be the kids, it'll be the parents that they should have the responsibility of making that decision for themselves. And I'd just like to point out that if we do decide to proceed with an in-person graduation against county public health guidance, um, if that's our stance, that it would be wise to be sure that it's very clear to all participants that the in-person graduation is against the county public health guidance, just so that they're fully informed. Because I think when a school district presents something, it tends to have that view of it's endorsed, it's a public school, it's safe, it's reasonable, it's planned and prepared. And if families were to arrive and then later discover that it was not in fact um, supported by the county public health, or that it was against local regulations or local guidance, that could be a big area of concern. So I do, I, I personally do not support proceeding against the county public health guidance, but if we, the school district decides to do so, I do think it needs to be made clear to parents because if you're saying that they're making that choice, it should be an informed choice. I think that's a very fair consideration. Thank you. Wednesday at 5 30 is correct that's instead, of thursday. instead of thursday the meeting we were considering on the 21st is now on the 20th at 5 30 cover graduation conversations and budget concerns budget new knowledge and anything else new we know about covid 19 as it relates to our district. Okay, great. I'm gonna move on to our consent agenda. Meeting minutes from last meeting, do I have a motion? I move that we um, approve consent agenda minutes and personnel assignment order. Okay, I'll second. Thank you. Um, I have a vote, Fennessy. Aye. McAllister? Aye. Weitzel? Aye. Griffith Garcia? Aye. Ortiz? Aye. Okay, unanimous pass. I was really sad to see our music teacher leaving. That's a Me too. Side. Like, that's a loss, a big loss for our district. Okay, okay. moving on to J, information, discussion, action items. We didn't move any items on related consideration. 
um, corrections to the certificate certificated salary schedule. Um, can we group these together? J J one through J five. J looks like we've got through N. J one. Oh, oh, I see. One through five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. I move that we approve J one through five. I'll second. Okay. Vote. Tennessee. Aye. McAllister. Aye. Weitzel. Aye. Griffith Garcia. Aye. Ortiz. Aye. So unanimous on all of J two through five. Uh, that brings us to items to be considered on the next board agenda. We want to make sure that COVID-19 is on every agenda. Right? Every agenda until we take it off effectively. Great. Thank you. And of course, budget updates too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, future board meeting dates. This is where we're making our change to Wednesday, the 20th at 5.30 p.m. And it'll be all via Zoom. And our next regularly scheduled board meeting is June 15th at 5.15. Obviously, there'll be a Zoom component to that. So I'm going to adjourn the meeting. Thank you, everyone, for participating and speaking up. These are, there are no pleasing everyone here. This is a really, really hard decision, a whole bunch of decisions, and there will be more. So thanks, everyone, for participating from afar and speaking up, chatting in. I appreciate it. Meeting adjourned. adjourned.